we're here today to talk about structure AI QA. And structure AI QA is the first quality assurance software for auto seg contouring engines. Structure AI QA is a fast, intuitive application that allows the users to objectively compare anatomical contours generated by algorithms or humans to a library of standards. Provides comprehensive comparison metrics, um, you know, that are both sensitive and specific. Provides batch analysis, allows you to calculate hundreds of data sets and thousands of structures in minutes. Uh, you can go into drill down mode that allows you to investigate failing cases visu visually and objectively. And finally produces formal reports to put in your file as you test new models and versions and or you, you, know, you assess your staff's contouring skills. So, you know, when uh, AI-based uh, auto seg segmentation first emerged on the market, let's say, oh, 10 years ago or so, it wasn't, you know, honestly, it wasn't all that good. Uh, the physicists were hesitant to adopt it. Well, of course, now that's all changed since then, and it's rapidly being adapted across the industry. So now physicists and physicians who are adopting this re really needs to say, hey, so how do I do acceptance testing on this auto contouring engine? You know, how, how am I supposed to, how do I know if it's doing a good job or not? And this is where it's, uh, uh, Structure AI uh, com, uh, QA is important to you right now. In fact, there's really, you know, three reasons why you, you would buy it. First, you would use it before you decide to buy an autoseg engine. Ideally, you would get a, a temporary license, uh, like I was saying, for uh, an auto seg vendor to try out the software. Structure would be then the perfect tool to organize and produce objective evidence of, of, of you know, how it's doing. For example, you know, is the Electa model working the best? Or is it the Varian model that's working the best? Or, you know, honestly, any third-party companies that, you know, are popping up across the industry and doing really good work, you know, like Limbus AI or any of the other half dozen or so uh, AI seg companies that are emerging, use it before you buy it to make a good buying decision. Okay, so use it before, the second time you'd be using it for acceptance testing. You know, you would you use it, um, so let's say you've decided uh, on an auto seg engine, great. So now let's figure out, you know, where we can trust it, where we don't trust it. We can, you know, do we like certain, you know, do we like certain organs of the model, but don't trust others? The user is going to have to make that decision as well. It's extremely inefficient to ask them to look at the results and ask if you, you know, you like them enough, you know, it's like a thumbs up, thumbs down. And of course, that's not scientific. And it does not lend itself to automation. It's very in inefficient and it's subjective. So again, with uh, Structure AI QA, you can, you can get then the, the metrics it provides you metrics that you can depend on in terms of doing, you know, acceptance testing. So again, you want to, you know, you can use it before, you know, you use Structure AI QA, you know, to evaluate a uh, auto seg engine before you buy it, and you can use it for uh, acceptance testing. The third one, of course, would be vendor updates, right? And so let's say, you know, you know, you know, in this world, you know, you. Um, New models are, are constantly being produced by the vendor. Auto seg, you know, engines are going to be much like dose engines, but much more rapid. They're going to be continually changing and, you know, new releases and, you know, hey, our model 2.5 now includes small, small bowel, or, you know, it, it could be in, or so it could be an existing model. Uh, of the, of you know, but has more organs and or it may be a new model with a new body site or a new model that supports a new imaging modality you know like for example we have a head and neck for ct we just released the mr for the brain you know as with any new release you want to check the software to see if it broke anything. You know, I've been around software world for a long, long time, and a lot of times they'll do, hey, we just came out with this great, you know, new feature. 
great, but it's now for some reason the old feature over here doesn't work so well anymore. You know, something broke along the way. So you, again, you can use it for regression testing. So again, so you know, why do you buy it? You know, again, for three th for the physicists for three reasons. You know, evaluate an, an auto seg engine that you're looking to purchase. Number two, acceptance testing. You know, as you get the new engine in, you're running through, you know, your your structures and you're seeing where it's, you know, does a really good job. Let's say it does a great job on the uh, brainstem, but you know, not for some reason not so great on the prostate. You know, that kind of thing. And of course, anytime there is a vendor uh, updates, if they, they hey, we got this new version you're going to get now, and then you could do uh, some um, acceptance testing. In terms of like for a, an administrator, you know, wh why would they uh, feel it's important? Again, they ins it, it ensures safety and accuracy. Uh, now you're making data-driven purchasing decisions. You know, you, again, do I, you know, which, which uh, auto seg engine do I uh, uh, decide to buy? Hey, here's all my data that I collected from Structure AI QA, and here it looks like the XYZ model did the best. So that's that's what we're going to go with. Um, it it also implements an efficient and reproducible validation process. Uh, it can com communicate better with your auto segment uh, uh, vendors. So, for example, if you are um, you know, you say you do find a, a problem with um, one of the structures that the auto seg engine is trying to, um, it, you know, is trying to trying to understand and all of that. It, it it has problems with it. Here, you can send this information back to the vendor and say, "Here's what I'm seeing here. You know, here's all my metrics. You know, and here and see see what you can see here too. Low cost." If you talk to your uh, sales rep, they'll, you'll find that it's very affordable. And um, and so what I would like to do right now is just do a brief demonstration of the software. So give me just a second here to bring that up. There we go. Structure AI QA. It's a super simple little app to use. It's a desktop application, very easy to install and um, quick and easy to learn. So what you would do first here is we would load the data. And so what are we going to do here? There's basically three sets of data that we're going to do. We're going to load here. First, remember, we have a, 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 an image set. So here is the CTs. Actually, let me, let me back up just a second here. OK, so what, what does I, uh, uh, Structure AIQA, I mean, what is it really doing? And so what it's going to do here, what I'm going to demonstrate is we're going to take a CT set that was first, you know, um, applied a structure set, let's say by a human being. This would be our 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 primary uh, structure set, right? Uh, you know, it was drawn by hand, let's say, and we and we did it, and everybody feels as though that's the, a really good example. Or maybe it was done by a, a, an older version of a. Um, auto seg engine okay but anyway that's going to be our gold standard right there and then the the auto seg engine or even another human being it doesn't really matter just the secondary set but for this case we'll call it an, an auto seg engine is going to also you know previously done a a, a segment uh, you know it did a structure set based upon the same set of ct scans so both this gold set and the uh, auto seg engine are going to do their own work on this common set of C uh, CT scans. And then we load the structure sets into each and now we compare them. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take a look now. And here's a group of CTs. Great. Let's give it a second to load here. My little uh, laptop here is not the speediest. It's usually pretty snappy though. Oh, here we go. Hang on a second. There we go. There, set up, up. <laughs> there we go. Loads it in. Uh, now we're going to take a look at. We're going to load the primary structure set. And let's say that was done by, you know, a human being, right? They did it and they did a super job on it. Just very, very careful work. It loads it in, and it says here, here, according to all the DICOM images here, here's what I 
what I found here. What this is what this is what structure found. Here are all the regions of interest. Okay, great. Then now on this side, we're going to do the same thing. But now here is the structure set that the um, auto seg engine did. So I'm going to open that up, and it does a couple things here. It says here. Structure says, here's all the things that I found in the auto seg engine. You know, these are all of the structures that I, I can find in here that the auto seg engine did. And by the way, here are all the ROIs that match between the primary and the secondary. Here, so we have a match for all of these. And I can tell you a little bit more about that in a minute and how it matches it, okay? And some things that you can do to make sure that they match. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, now we load the data, and there we go. And so let's take a look to see what we got here first. As you can see in the big main viewer here, we have you know the typical um, CT uh, view here. And as I roll my mouse wheel, I can you know walk through all the different slices, and everybody's very familiar with that sort of thing. Um, up here on the upper left-hand side here, we have a plain navigation field. And by just moving this line here, we're right here we can see, well, where am I in the, in the entire structure? Where am I? And so it says, yeah, you're right here along this line. But I can grab it and I can move it around a bit and kind of quickly go to a spot, okay, something like that. All right. Down here is a list of all of the regions of interest that were common, that, you know, that structure found that was common in the primary uh, structure set and in the secondary structure set. So one in the gold set of data done by a human being, let's say, and the second one by the uh, auto seg engine. Down here, of course, um, uh, we've got some uh, window leveling sort of thing that you guys are familiar with. And um, and so, so now we've got all of this uh, uh, set up for us. And notice on the right here, we have a metric method. I'll get into that in just a few minutes here. But basically, we're saying, hey, it's the default linear, OK? And we'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. By using this default linear metric method, I'm going to do a calculation. And presto changeo. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Now on our visual side here, <coughs> excuse me. On our visual uh, uh, of the CT sets, let's take a look to see what we have here. Now, down on the bottom here, if you'll notice, it says uh, opacity. I can kind of move this. And I can get it so the colors are a little bit more vibrant if I move it all the way to the right. But if I well, but if I really want to see what the the CT is showing me, the you know, the anatomy, I can kind of lighten that up so I don't see it at all. But I can put something in the middle. But for right now, for our purposes, I'm going to have it kind of strong. And so what are we seeing here? We, we can see that in this particular uh, example, it found that both were looking at the brain stem. Okay, great. The solid line here, if you see a solid line, that is showing <clears throat> uh, where, where the structure that the human being did or our primary says, yeah, I th this is where I see the brain stem to be. Okay, great. The secondary, or the in our example here, the uh, auto seg engine said, "Well, actually, I found it right here. It's actually smaller. I think I think it's smaller." And so, what what we've done here is we've done some real simple visual metrics, and we can say that you know where it's green, this is where the two structure sets agree. And then in this particular case, if it's blue, it means that hey. Um, secondary set or auto seg engine, you actually missed a whole area right here. It's just blue, like it's cold. It never, it never got any radiation here, or I think it should have. Let me go to a different spot here. Maybe show it a little more different. Um, there, if you can see this here, again, same idea. Uh, blue, green means common. Blue means, hey, uh, actually, I've got this contour all the way this large and you miss this whole area here and if it's red hey auto contouring engine you actually overshot you're saying that the tumor comes way out to here but it really doesn't and so you're going to be applying radiation now to an area that i don't believe needs it so 
that's all great from a visual cue, just a kind of a quick glance through and all of that. You can kind of see where they've agreed and not agreed. But then let's take a look at the actual metrics here. Great. And basically the same, same notion applies here. On the left-hand side of this column here, we've got that ROI matches this uh, column over here on the left. Great. And so then for each one of them, we have a series of metrics that we put together for you. So for, for one, the first one is called volume one. And it says here in this particular example, um, it says that if for a CTV one, um, we, uh, I, I found a volume or the rather the, the um, primary set found a volume in cubic centimeters of 172.52. The auto sag engine said, well, yeah, okay, I found a volume of 172.38. What's common between them? Well, 172.38, what's missing, 0.132. Was there any extra? No, this is obviously great agreement right here. Uh, we also do a dice coefficient. And then we also do, what is the max, what was the maximum amount of difference between the two in millimeters? So in this case, one. And then we have the scoring thing over here. And again, the metric method that we used was this default linear. And let me just go to that right now, just for a second. So metric parameters here, okay? So right now we can set up any sort of metric parameter we want, or basically it's our own little personal scoring system, okay? How we wanna be scored or how do we wanna, how do we wanna penalize, if you will, um, you know, the, you know, the mistakes that were, or the differences that were made between the two set. Out of the box, everybody gets the uh, default linear, right? And basically what it's saying here is, okay, here's the center line at zero mil millimeters. And as uh, we find differences where it's moving away from center, okay, meaning uh, here I'm overshooting and here I'm undershooting, if you will, or, you know, red and blue, then if I go to one millimeter, I'm gonna now, you know, raise the pen penalty up, like, looks like 0.5 here. And then if I'm three millimeters away, I penalize it, you know, one, 1.52, et cetera, uh, on both sides, right? And I can do that for, you know, I could create my own, you know, crazy little uh, metrics here, or rather scoring or penalization system and, you know, do all kinds of different things here, you know, variety of different things. So yeah, I've got some kind of blank, there we go. But anyway, so, but out of the box, you know, you can do your default linear. So knowing that, there it is, default linear. And as you can see, everything looks pretty good. You know, my scoring system did, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not gonna get too critical if it's beyond some point, you know, like one millimeter, but if it's like two or three, sure. In fact, we can see this one here, it's way out. So let's just go to that one here. So it's the op optical uh, chasm there, and there we go. And here we have a histogram, and zero, no agreement, you know, right down, you know, where there's just, obviously these two were just completely missed each other. You know, and one, and so uh, we're saying that uh, the, um, uh, on, the, on this particular uh, one, uh, that uh, we have found a lot that was with, you know, uh, it, uh, uh, undershot by one millimeter, two milli, quite a bit on two millimeters, three, four, five, overshot or at one, two, three, four, and five, and the, and the amount. And so uh, it gives us a real, you know, some real clear metrics here. Um, also, we also have the metrics just, you know, written out here in a table format for you. And you can always grab that and put that into an Excel spreadsheet and send that to your vendor or do some other uh, work that you would like to do with it just to get a better idea of you know, really what's going on. And so again, lots of great, great metrics here and you can kind of roll through them all, right? And there you go. And you, it's, a, it's a very, very handy thing to have. Um, again, use it before you know, you're evaluating uh, to buy a new uh, AutoSeg engine. You do it during uh, uh, acceptance testing. And then three, you would uh, do it if there's any new updates. Another thing you can do here is um, regions of interest association rules, okay? So you could create, I don't have anything in here right at the moment, but what you can do is um, 
you can say that, well, you know, in DICOM imaging, uh, it's not unusual to call uh, a piece of anatomy different things like, like for example, you know, uh, uh, left parotid, like L, they actually spell it out, L-E-F-T space parotid, right? O okay, great. Or it's L underscore parotid or parotid underscore left or parotid underscore L. You know how it is. It's just, you know, people have different ways of doing it. So what you can do here is you can enter in, uh, you know, names of things that mean the same thing. So let's say left parotid. So left parotid means it'll mean L underscore parotid or, or LT underscore uh, parotid or um spell it out l-e-f-t space parotid you know all of those all of those different kinds of ways of doing it or of, of um, identifying a, a region of interest it'll all mean the same thing then to the um uh to the uh to the software so that way you're not like hey why why didn't it find the left parotid here and then you just go oh because i called it something else and it doesn't recognize it so here you can add that to the list and now it will and then what you could also do here is then you can decide you know which um uh default metric you want to apply to that particular region of interest okay and that'll uh there you go, save changes and recalculate and look at that, it takes care of it. So, great. Another thing that we can do here um, is, uh, let's see, oh, there's some preferences. Yes, of course. For example, you can set your voxel resolution here. You can, uh, you know, the difference view opacity, you can kind of like manually set it at, hey, always start at, you know, 35% or something like that, and then I'll, I can adjust from there. Um, you can also uh, set it up so that, you know, when you launch the software and you go and you finally hit the, you know, load data and it does its thing, uh, go ahead and just, you know, in, I can either manually hit the, when I get to here, I can manually hit the uh, calculate button, or I can say, you know, just, automatically go right to calculation and don't even have to prompt me, just do it, right? So also uh, right here, we can we have a space where we can regions of interest to ignore. Like in this particular case, hey, I don't want, uh, you know, don't do anything with skin or body or external or couch, you know, just ignore, ignore those because we're not gonna bother with them and it will. Okay. Um, and then finally, what we can do here is we can do something called a batch analysis. So basically what we have here is in the, the example that I'm showing you, it's kind of like, you know, one set of CT image versus another set. Okay, great. And I bring it up and I can look at it. I can put, put together a report on it and I can, you know, get the metrics that I'm looking for. But, you know, if you've got like a whole bunch of them to do, like hundreds, let's say, you know, to if you let's say you have a whole battery of what you call gold standard um, uh, um, contouring sets based upon a set of of, of CT sets that you want to use against your new contouring engine. You know, that could be dozens or you know, ten, you know, even a couple hundred. You know, that you've got ready to do this with. And so, what you can do is you can set up to do batch analysis. And how it, how it essentially does it is you would set up a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet and in it you would, and there's explicit directions on how to do this in the user manual, but basically what you would do is you would uh, lay down the path of, let's say, here's my first, here's the CT set, here's the, rather, here's the structure set, and here's the, the primary structure set, second structure set, and it's gonna deal with these things. Then the next one is here's the primary structure set, here's the secondary set for this set of um, uh, you know uh, contours, and on and on and on and on and on. You can do that for a thousand of them, doesn't matter. And then you would load this into the engine here, uh, just, you know, you would import it. It would grind through it all, just like you see here, but, but instead of giving you a presentation like you see here, it would then spit out a new uh, spreadsheet that then you could open up in Excel or something like that and see the data that way, okay? 
if you're doing like very, very large sets of data. If you're just doing like one at a time or two or three at a time, awesome, you can do it this way. But if you're doing some batch analysis, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely want to do that. So anyway, um, that's really about it. Uh, again, Structure AI QA, it's a great tool, it's inexpensive. Uh, and it's a it's a great way to use, especially for two two basic reasons. Hey, I'm I'm looking at auto contouring engines, and I need some way to QA it and put some metrics behind it. Sometimes it's also we we've, we've also sold this one to uh, learning institutions like uh, colleges and whatnot, uh, and so they would use it for like evaluating their students or even internally. Hey, I I'd like to see how you know our uh, some contouring some some of our dosimetrists are doing some contouring here, and we have it against the gold set. Let's see how see see how well they're doing. So it's a good evaluation tool in that regard. But again, for auto seg engines, it's great. Again, uh, use it before you buy one uh, for evaluation. And if once once you decide on one, you can uh, use it for acceptance testing. Know which ones, know which regions of interest are. It does, you know, your auto seg engine does really, really well. What are regions of interest? It's not so great on, and so then. Um, then uh, what we can do then is then then at least you know that well you know the auto seg engine doesn't do the best on this region here so we want to pay particular attention to that one and be very careful around it so and then of course anytime there's any of any updates that come around you can run it through your batch analysis and uh, off you go so uh, is there any questions or anything like that Okay, uh, if we always need manual structure set, it's only useful for comparison. Once we start using an auto set, we, we cannot check if the structures are good or not. It's, um, you can along the way, but again, you would have to have a gold set against it. So what you, what you could do, um, again, like I said before, once you get updates and things like that, you would use it. That's one way of using it, of course. But another one is, um, you can see how much has changed. So for example, let's say you have a set of structures that you've ran right on a patient and you're looking at it and you're doing all this stuff. And then you say over time, you say, hey, I'm, I, my auto seg engine is, you know, I think, or things have been changing. Let's see against that first one, how much it's changed. You know, you, well, everybody, I wanna thank you so much uh, for taking the time to listen to my webinar. If you have uh, any questions, let me go back to this real quick. If you have any questions, um, please uh, you know, give us a, a ring at sales at standardimaging.com or you'd like to talk to me personally. My uh, uh, email address is jmanion, that's J-M-A-N-I-O-N at standardimaging.com and I'd be super happy to assist you.